Hold on. I'm going to ask both of you guys. And I, and I love, this is not me arguing with y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm a genuine accents question. Did any of you guys foresee that we'll be 10 games into the year without seeing the big three yet? At any point in the preseason when we were doing shows and we were talking, did anybody feel that? No, but we right. knew at some 10 game stretch, we weren't going to ha- yes. see the big three. And just because it's the first 10 games does not change my concern. It, it unveils underlying issues with the roster, with the team that <laughs> Booker may or may not be able to, uh, to mask. And it's not my job to come up with a backup plan. No, it's if not it happens, yours. No, you're right. But it is their job. Listen, I, I, I'm going to say this again. I think Saul made a great point in the chat. What did he say? I cannot at all evaluate this basketball team and say if they are good, bad, or anything in between until we see the whole team together. I all mean, right. it's just that simple. And again, I would be really, I would be really upset right now if this was Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, and Brad Beal, and we were missing a Kogi, or we were missing Nurkic, and we're losing these basketball games. I get that, but when it's you're not- when you're missing two out of the three, how many? Like, yeah, I, guys, I I just can't. I'm not I'm not panicking. I don't think the sky's falling. And I'm I'm gonna go out here and please y'all can go back and rewind. It's all y'all want. When this team gets a hundred percent healthy and in the groove, it's gonna sound like comedy that we're saying some of the things that we're saying about this team. I get that, but I'm still upset in the moment. Yeah, and no, I think it's, I'm it's allowed cool. to be no. upset right now because this is trash and I don't wanna I don't I feel like I'm wasting my time. Yeah, and it's, okay. And it's that's not fair. No, it's that's not fair. just not it's not okay. It's, it's not just losing games without having the big three. How and the perspective yes. on that yes. is is the problem here. I don't care. I watched some of the worst basketball in Suns history courtside while working for the team. Mm-hmm. Some shit basketball with no point guards, no talent, mm-hmm. no nothing. Bad coaching, bad everything. And I can't tell you I can remember a time that they went two for 21 in, in a given quarter, shot 10%. And it's not like this is a one-time occurrence. Sure, it wasn't 10%, but they've been abysmal offensively in the fourth quarters. Mm -hmm. And any NBA team should be able to do better than that in a given quarter. But a team that has Kevin Durant and now Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal sure as hell should be able to shoot better than that in a fourth quarter. And that's my problem with it. Mm -hmm. And I'm not panicked. I'm not saying this team is total crap for the rest of the year Mm -hmm. and all is lost, but that is concerning and it's a flaw and it's something to really look at and take seriously because this, if they did this and none of the big three played and you're relying on a, a bench that also didn't have Eric Gordon, I go, okay, well, this was just bad luck, but that's not the case. You have two of your big three, and this is a historically poor offensive quarter, uh, and no NBA team, let alone one running out, Kevin Durant and Bradley Beal, should yeah. play like that in the fourth. Ever. I mean, I, mean I, I, you know, I've, I do feel like Kev, Kevin is doing the best he can. Kevin Durant, and, and what I mean is Kevin Durant is doing the best he can. I mean, the guy's 35 years old, and he, he's still putting up fantastic numbers. Uh, Brad, right now, this game was not good. <laughs> this was not a good game. Okay, um, I don't think Brad is a hundred percent ready to rock and roll, and I, and you're seeing it. But I mean, I just don't know what else Kevin can do, except wow. except I, I except just take over the fourth quarter and win these basketball. So I think that might be the problem. That though. is the problem. He's trying to do that. Yeah. And you know what? Give me a freaking pick and roll. Give me. Anything that resembles you trying to run some form of an offensive system rather than relying on Kevin Durant to try to play but hero are, but ball. But aren't you seeing that when he's off the court? So what's the excuse for when he's off the court? Well, They're playing their offense. You can't blame KD for the I'm minutes not, he's off I'm the court. I'm not blaming not you. KD. Not you. Not I'm blaming saying. KD isn't in the sense that he's the one who's asking for this necessarily. Blaming the situation that you can't put KD in that position right. to have to do that. I agree. That's the problem. I agree. Like y'all were sharing the ball equally contributing in the first three quarters. And now all of a sudden it's all on KD. Right. No, I agree. That's not okay. No, that's not okay. So, so who's at fault? 
Who's at fault? Is all it, of is the it, above. Is it, is it, is it Grayson Allen? The answer is D. All, is all it, of the above. Is it Grayson Allen? It's all of them. It's Grayson. It's Bradley. It's KD to an extent. It's coaching. It's everybody because this is a complete systematic failure when you shoot two of 21 and a quarter. Yeah. That is not, that's not one person. You can't right. point the finger at one person. I agree. And I'm not, and, and look, Kevin Durant probably is the one that carries the least blame of it. But still, if he's the guy that's going to wind up with the ball in his hands constantly, uh, there's some blame that goes there. But well, not, you can't lay it at his feet. But everybody deserves a portion of this blame when it's this ugly. No, yeah, I, I listen. I I'm not necessarily disagreeing with y'all. I'm just not at the point where I'm feeling like this is something to panic about. Not yet. I, I'm just not. This is not a good basketball team without their best player. I get that. That's what it comes but down it, to. They're not a great. They're, they're not a great basketball a good team. Good basketball yes. team. It should not. I don't need them to be They need to be serviceable great. at the very least. And right now, it doesn't even feel like we're reaching that level. And you brought up Steph and the Warriors. Mm -hmm. Steph and the Warriors without Steph, but with KD, Draymond, no, no, and no. Clay. No, I, I'm not talking about that super I know, but, but we have I'm KD talking about, I'm talking Bradley about Hill. Clay, yeah, three, Steph, and Draymond. Three. The okay. big three. Yeah, that's a big four. Yeah. Well. I'm not talking about a big four. Like, that's cheating if you add KD okay. to the Warriors. <laughs> I'm talking about Steph, Clay, and Draymond. When you take Clay off that team, they're not very good. When you take Steph off that team, they're not very good. That's just facts. Go look at the numbers. I mean, when when those guys, when that big three is together and one of them is not playing, they're not very good. They're not okay. They're not a big three like this, though, because Draymond is is a guy that does a little th bit of everything well, but isn't a dominant offensive force at any point. Like you're looking at Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal. Uh, are, are two dominant forces. Yes, you've got to slow down Bradley Beal. Yeah. I get that in part. But this team should be average. They should not be, again, I'm just going to keep saying it, two of 21. Two, yeah, that's this game. That's I, ten, anything no. that's 10% in life is pretty much shit. Let's, I mean, if, if you're doing something with 10% effort, you aren't going to have your job much longer, right? I mean, unless you're the best ever to do it, and 10% yeah. from you is better than uh, than 100% from most. But 10% yeah. tonight from the field in the All fourth, right. I can't get off that. All right, so, so can I, is that, I, I'm going to make a bet with you, Espo. I'm going to make a bet right here with you on the show. Okay. Okay, I, I'll extend the same thing I did to Lindsay. I will take you out to the best dinner of your life. If the Suns ever shoot 10% in a quarter the rest of the year. If they ever shoot 10% in a quarter a, the rest of the year again, I'm going to lose my ever-loving mind. Well, they won't. But you know what? They won't. They've been pretty damn close a couple other fourth quarters. So it's not as if we're saying they were shooting 60% in every fourth quarter and they came in and they shot 10 tonight. They've been atrocious. I agree no, with they you. Have been. The yeah. odds that they shoot 10% again in a quarter are very slim. But after tonight, I'm not saying it's out of the realm of possibility. Yeah. I, I, you'll do any, any place... In Arizona, brother, if they shoot 10% in any quarter for the rest of the year, I will take you out any way you want. And, and, and here's the thing. To me, that's an aberration. To me, that's a... Now, the fourth quarter failures is not. They're failing in the fourth quarters. That's a fact. But tonight was an extreme anomaly. 10%? Okay, but it, mean, it wasn't... It may have been more extreme, but it's not an anomaly at this point when it we've had fourth quarter meltdowns. No, I'm not saying the fourth quarter me meltdown. Season. I'm talking about the the ten percent how bad the, they were. Yeah, tonight. how bad it was, but they've yeah. been pretty bad. Oh, you're making yeah, me they, have. Like, they have, they have, they it's have. It's not you it's, looking already. You're making me be Gerald Bourget right now. I'm looking <laughs> up stats to back up the fact that my brain feels like it's going to explode. No, this listen, time. this well, is yeah, this isn't good, guys. This isn't good. I know it feels like crap, but. I mean, I just, I just feel like until I see this basketball team whole, I can't make an assumption that they're one thing or the other. They just haven't been whole yet. Well, and hopefully that changes on Wednesday.